We're all waiting for the big Grand Theft Auto announcement, and Netflix has one of its own, bringing the classic GTA trilogy to Netflix games. Plus, Dan Hauser, formerly of Rockstar Games, has unveiled some new projects of his own. And the latest PlayStation Plus and Game Pass games have been announced, and ooh boy, there's some bangers. We're going to talk about all this stuff and so much more right now on Gaming News Weekly. What's up, everybody? It's time for another episode of Gaming News Weekly, the best weekly video game news show out there. Every single Monday, we're bringing you all the biggest things happening in the video game industry. You can find us on Fruit Lab, YouTube, podcast services everywhere. My name is Erock the Red. I'm joined every week by this gentleman right here, full clip. What's going on, buddy? How are you? Hey, doing good. You know, good to have a break, but good to be back all the same. Yeah, yeah, we were so we took uh, last week off because there's really wasn't much to talk about. We enjoy, enjoyed our Thanksgiving. You tightened up everything. You're looking really clean and yeah, uh, fresh. Yeah, I like it, dude. I like it. Um, what have you been up to otherwise? Uh, anything fun, exciting? How was your How was your Thanksgiving holiday? First of all, pretty good. You know, I went and had one with the family um, that day. My wife actually had her her back go out on her, oh. and. Uh, wasn't able to make it, so instead that Sunday made another Thanksgiving dinner uh, oh, all by geez. myself at home. So, you know, nice. double Thanksgiving, always good. How'd that turn out, all right? Pretty good, yeah. I've, I've always had good luck making turkeys, and, you know, nothing fancy like you do. I know you do, like, the smoking or the... I did it in the uh, smoker, <laughs> yep. Yeah, complicated yep. stuff that I will not try to delve into, but the good old-fashioned uh, oven, I'm, I'm okay yeah. at a turkey. You're not dropping in, like, a deep fryer? <laughs> not yet you know what maybe i wish i could someday but it I seems know. dangerous dude i did one of those once i did one i had i had the turkey the whole setup i had it all ready to go dropped one in there first of all it overflowed like oil everywhere mm. very dangerous and yeah, then right it into like, the fire yeah dude it, it was crazy and then it cooked for like um i don't know what seems like forever we took it out i'm cutting it into it and it's like not even close to done. It was, it was, it was a le- first and last time I ever did that. So, yeah. Um, the smoker is where it's at. That's where it's at. Nice. Um, what else you get up to uh, over the uh, the last couple of weeks? Anything fun? Well, you know, uh, at your uh, – you recommended a game a few weeks back. And I, I know you know because I, I sent you a text that I am helplessly addicted to this uh-huh. game. Hard Space Ship Breaker. It's, Dude, how addicting uh, is it? I was just playing it like an hour ago. I had to have a little more. I've uh, I've already hit 25 hours on it on Steam. I just made oh, sure to check damn. before we started. That's crazy. Yeah, that was fast. I think like you have more than I do, I think. I think I'm like at 22 or something like that. 23 maybe. Um yeah, dude, isn't it? Like it's just something about it. It's just yeah. like it's it's, it's satisfying. Yes, it's satisfying taking a big old chunk off of a ship and tossing yeah. it into a into the furnace or whatever um yeah yeah it's a lot of fun um and even like everything like how do you feel about like the story like the tacked on story i know a lot of people negativity comes from the story about you know unions and big corporations and stuff like that uh what what are your thoughts on that i mean there's definitely a message there it's it's a little on the nose but yeah um it is what it is it's nothing that movies and any other game hasn't done for the longest time there's there's a story and it's a story you can like it or or dislike it you don't have to like the message to appreciate the game exactly yeah that's funny i'm glad you're uh i'm glad you're in it um yeah it's it's daunting though when you look at your debt that you owe the uh, corporation you know know, still like yeah you know billions of dollars or whatever i just Uh, broke under under the one billion mark you did you're definitely ahead of me i'm still like at one i maybe like maybe one more ship until i can get there yeah yeah it's 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 fun though this is one i think i'm gonna go for all the achievements on yeah i think i was i think i am too i looked at the achievements and they're definitely doable like there's nothing like you know play because they have like the modes where you could know like you're not allowed to die or whatever like that you know where it's like 
And I'm like, no, that doesn't sound great at all. Like, you know, air permadeath yeah. modes, you know, and they don't have you doing that for an achievement, which is good because it's pretty easy to die uh, in this world. Yeah. So. Yeah. I've made some mistakes. Yeah. 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 For me, it's always like I try to push something using that force push thing. And like, I just oh. get blasted. <laughs> off just launch into yourself space. into the incinerator. Yeah. I've done that yeah. before. Yeah. It's not good. Um, great. That's awesome. I, I, I take it you probably haven't been playing much else if you had 25 hours on a uh, ship breaker. Is that true? That and a little, uh, Red Dead Online. Okay. okay. Yeah. Having some fun over there. Yeah. I've been playing mostly, uh, hard space ship breaker myself, but I did. So steam had the autumn sale or whatever they call it. Um, and I picked up a bunch of games. I got, um, neon white, which is a game that I've wanted for a while. That's a kind of like a parkour game where you use cards to like um, jump oh, yeah. around. Yeah. So uh, that one I started. That's I think that's the only one that I started out of all the ones that I got. And that's a lot of fun. I've been uh, really enjoying that. But then I got – so there's a free game called Arcade Full of Cats. Um, and it's just like a, a picture, or like a hidden cats, whatever, like a – but I've been playing that with my son. It's a very, very well made game for a free to play game. There's like they sell you on some DLC, um, mm-hmm. but there's like five levels and they're arcades and they're all cat themed. Like so, all the arcade machines have like cat themes. Like um, I don't even know. I can't even think, like Street Stray Fighter or something like that. I think it is <laughs> like you nice. know. Um, but yeah, it's a free like, and we've been playing that. Um, I got Inscription, which is a card game that um has like tons of amazing reviews haven't started that griftlands another deck builder you could see like the theme these are all like deck builders that have been on my wish list um what else uh vanquish you ever play vanquish no this is like maybe hmm, 15 years i don't know it's an older game but it was like a first person shooter um, where it has like this slide mechanic and it was like one of the first to do it. And it's like really hmm. fast paced. Um, so I got that for like two bucks. So yeah, it was great, man. I, I, uh, I got a lot of fun games and I bought like another humble bundle with like wrestle quest in it, all the walking dead telltale games. Oh, nice. Um, and then I traded some of those and I got some games that were on my wish list for a while. Like I got tape to tape, which is like a hockey roguelike um and code vein which is like this anime dark souls type game dude i got so many games now i just hit 150 on my steam deck um that i have like the codes like locked in and then i still have like a bunch of codes like set aside that i'm like do i want to keep these or not yeah Yeah. it went fast my library went fast have you had the steam deck for a year at this point or under a year i think it was i think it's mm. I don't know when I got it. I think it's been a year um, because I think I got it like right around this time last year. Cause I, I do remember getting excited for the winter sale. Yeah, so that was fast. Um, 150 games already. Yeah. I guess the hum- humble bundle does work. You know, I got in on it this last time uh, to get hard sh- ship, hard space ship breaker for it's such a good, a good price. deal. Yeah. Yeah. And then like you could trade, like, I mean, like what was, what else was in that? WWE was that the one yeah. that was in there? The new WWE game, like I traded for, oh, I don't even remember what I traded that for. Some good games, though. Like I got, I don't even know. I got so many great games, so. But uh, yeah, I've been. That's what I've been doing. Go check out the indie game swap on Reddit, and um, there's always like good games that you could get uh, for for your trades. So, um, all right, should we should we move this show along? Yeah, let's get into it. All right, let's do it. Let's talk about our new releases from last week. All right, first up, Gangs of Sherwood came out November 30th on PC, PS5, and Xbox Series X. I've been excited about this one for a while. Like, I'm a, like a low-key Robin Hood kind of fan. And this one is, I think it's ever since that Kevin Costner movie. You remember that one? The Prince of Thieves? Yeah. I was going to say Men in Tights. I don't know the difference. Oh, that's a good one, though, too. Yeah, yeah. That's Men in Tights is the one that that was based on. Um, But anyways, uh, so this is the the gang. Robin Hood, uh, uh, Maid Marion, Friar Tuck, and Lil Jon. 
Not the guy. Not yeah. Not that guy. <laughs> Different little John. Oh. <laughs> that would be great if they just yeah popped him in there. What? Um, but they each have like these different like powers and abilities. Uh, and the gameplay, it's like a, uh, I don't know, like a beat 'em up type thing. It's got like combo based, kind of like a um, Devil May Cry style yeah. uh, fighting game. But like the abilities are all like this high tech, like kind of steampunky gadgets and stuff like that. So it looks super cool. And I was like, dude, this game is gonna be dope. And it's got like um, one to four player co op that you could that you could do. Um, unfortunately, I was reading some reviews and it is not as exciting um, as I was hoping it would be. Uh, it's got pretty pretty crap reviews. Only the good ones were like play it with a friend and you'll have fun. If you play it by yourself, it gets very repetitive and very boring very quickly. Like after like the first 20 minutes, it's like, okay, just do more of this. So I was like, oh, it's kind of a bummer. Um, but it's, I think it's only like a $40 game. So, you know, you see a sale in a little bit. I might scoop it up, maybe, you know, get some friends to play with me because it does look fun. And me, myself being, you know, a Robin Hood junkie. <laughs> well, I don't know if I'd go that far, but, um, you know, it, it's, it might be something I get something out of, but I was, um, I was, I was very upset to see that it was, you know, it was reviewed as poorly as it has been i think like as of right now there's only um a handful of reviews on metacritic but it was at like 40 something not good what an interesting aesthetic to this game like it's probably the same thing that does it for you as like liza p where it's pinocchio meets steampunk stuff exactly yeah this is this seems to be the the theme lately huh just like let's just take an ip and just let's steampunk the shit out of it um, but yeah, like every, like all the, the combo base fighting and stuff, it looked like it had potential. So I don't know. We'll see. All right. The next one, steam world build. This came out December 1st available on all the consoles and PC. Um, so steam world, if you're familiar with the whole concept of that, they, they always make these steam world games or, or steampunk style games. They've had a, uh, like, a RTS game, a platformer, a deck builder, a tower defense game, just like they always have like these different ones. And now this one is a like a a builder kind of manager simulator type game. Yeah, Um, I would say that it's a, a city builder on the surface. And then underneath, it's a little more reminiscent of SteamWorld Dig, um, where almost like that Terraria, except for this one shifts the camera and you're in 3d um i did play the demo of this like it it seems like a while ago so i was kind of surprised to see that this was just coming out Mm -hmm. but yeah the city building aspect is cool it's a really cool um aesthetic to it because it's like old west wild west but steampunk robots instead of people yeah yeah so how what did you think of the gameplay so like you basically you mine underneath the surface for like resources and then you build your city above right yeah and then on top of the city it's it's like a city builder where you're well you need this refinery well in order to have that refinery you need this type of robot and those robots have to have houses so all this management and and setting up districts in the game and managing the resources on the surface and below the surface it and the the way that uh it contrasts between the city building and then going underground to the mines, it's like two totally different games. Really? But it definitely makes you feel like, you know, you're not just doing one thing the entire time. And I like that aspect of it. Gotcha. Yeah, no, that sounds cool. It looks fun. The, the Steam World games are always, like, they're always good. You know, I don't think they've had a miss. They know how to make a fun game, like something that is, um, that you want to play, that you enjoy playing, you know. So hopefully they continue the streak with this one. I really enjoyed, um, what was the one I just got recently? Quest, I think. And that's like a turn-based kind of um, strategy game. And I, and I had a blast playing that one. So, All right, and that was, our, that was our new releases. Not much. You know, we're in a lull right now. Between now and the new year, not going to see too much coming out. So um, 
you know, give us some more time to play all these, you know, games I got on the on the yeah. Steam sale. You know, we got to catch up. Exactly. All right, let's move things along and talk about our news of the week. All right, if you're excited for that Steam World build game and you've got Game Pass, well, I got good news for you. Game Pass games for December were just announced. Man, they got some good ones. They got some good ones coming at us. All right, so first up, Remnant from the Ashes and Remnant 2 are both, they just popped up there. No announcement. They're like, bam, enjoy some uh, sick gunfighting uh, type souls-like games and then spirit of the north came out december 1st that you know you play as a cute little fox exploring the arctic and then uh steam world build uh we just talked about december 1st it's a day one of uh game available on game pass clone drone in the danger zone title of your sex tape um that comes out december 5th Rise of the Tomb Raider is back to Game Pass on December 5th. While the Iron's Hot is another day one game coming December 5th. This one sounds good. Uh, yeah. Did you read the premise for this one? Like uh, you're a, a, a journeyman blacksmith on a quest to become a master and restore a ruined village along the way. So yeah, that one sounds pretty dope. You forge weapons and fix things. Sounds yeah, I want to check this one out. Yeah. Uh, World War Z Aftermath also comes out December 5th, and Goat Simulator 3, December 7th, Against the Storm, December 8th, Tin Hearts, December 12th, and Far Cry 6 comes out December 14th. I think every time we talk about a Far Cry, I'm like, maybe this is when I play Far Cry, and I never have, but uh, maybe yeah. this is when I play Far Cry. Have you played um, any of the uh, Goat Simulator games? I did. I played the first one. I think it was the first one that was on uh, Game Pass, and that is ridiculous. I was just playing it with my son, yeah. just kind of running around, just like launching a goat around, and it is um, it's silly. I'm interested to see yeah. what um, what the third one's all about. More goats. Probably Maybe. more goats. <laughs> Whoa. Um, and then they also announced that they will be adding two new games to the Game Pass core uh chivalry 2 and totally reliable delivery service service both co both come to game pass core on december 6th another two two great games so um actually decided to, that we're gonna w friends of our friends of mine my gameplay group we're talking about how um we're bummed that like this is about the time that we'd be playing like a call of duty game you know getting on uh, at night and, and playing and uh, and we're not doing that. None of us. I got it. So I was like, yo, let's get back into Chivalry 2 and just smash people with uh, shields and scream. So we're going to jump back nice. into Chivalry 2 this weekend. So I'm excited to play more of that because I've always enjoyed it. But it's more fun with friends than it is uh, you know, on your own. And then leaving December 15th, Chained Echoes, Opus Magnum, Potion Craft, Alchemist Simulator, and Rubber Bandits are all leaving game pass on december 15th so man another great month of game pass uh in just the first wave some a lot of games first of all you know a bunch of them and then some really uh fun games some new titles it's a good month but yeah i think out of those the um remnant 2 i'm super excited to to get in there and play that that didn't come out that long ago like I was playing the first remnant to get caught up. First remnant's awesome. Never finished that, but I'm I'm gonna jump into remnant too. And then that I want to yeah. see what this. Um, did you look at the trailer for this? Well, the iron's hot at all. Yeah. Did it look cool? Is it cartoony? What does it look like? I didn't watch a trailer for it. Yeah. Um. I mean, I I don't know how to explain it without referencing other games. But I don't That's really know which me. games to reference. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, it, it, it looks cool, though. Like I was saying, um, that's probably one of the top three here that I would definitely check out. And I'm with you on Far Cry 6 as far as that goes. It's, I, I'm not like a big fan into the Far Cry series just yeah. because there's always been something else to play. Yeah. So I could definitely get into that. And it seems like the game, the kind of game like Assassin's Creed where you could play it for like a month almost obsessively 
and then I just kind of be done with it and be okay with that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Especially if like, like I just said, you know, I haven't been playing any Call of Duty or anything. And if I want to like jump in and play a, a shooter, um, you know, I'll play a campaign of something like Far Cry 6 and, and probably enjoy myself. So, um, yeah, some great games. And then uh, PlayStation Plus, they also announced their um, free games coming to PlayStation Plus for December. Some more great games. Um, Lego 2K Drive, Power Wash Simulator, and Sable. I almost just bought the Lego game. Maybe a couple weeks ago it was on sale. But it was still still a little high. I think it was like twenty five or thirty bucks or whatever for that. But yeah. my son has been my son's gotten really into Legos lately. So he saw that and he was like, I could make like a, my own car and like drive it, which I don't know if you can. But um he's really excited. So I told him that we'd be able to play this uh coming up and he is very excited. And then on top of that, you know, who doesn't want if you don't have Power Wash Simulator, now you know, if you have PlayStation Plus, you could get in there and just hose everything down. Oh, yeah. I I really do want to play it pretty bad. Yeah, I mean, dude, it's basically the same as um, the Shipbreaker game, except... Um, You're not in le- space and you power wash, of course. Exactly, exactly. I feel like there's less thought goes into the power wash simulator. Like, Shipbreaker is more of like a backwards puzzle. Um, yeah. Power wash, you just wash and stuff, but it still has that same feeling, that catharsis, you know. Um, so yeah, good stuff. So um, yeah, you have until December fourth to get the previous month's games: Mafia Two Definitive Edition, Dragon Ball: The Breakers, and Aliens Fire Team Elite. So two good announcements for these subscription services. All right, the theme this month is Grand Theft Auto, and we've got some more. Big GTA news. Not as big as the upcoming news, but, uh, you know, some exciting stuff. Grand Theft Auto, the trilogy, the definitive edition, will be coming to Netflix so you can play it. If you're a Netflix subscriber, on the go, on your TV, I don't know how it works. (laughs) Um, But it's only mobile. December 14th. Yeah, but they have like these docks now or whatever that you could like plug into your TV. I don't know how it works. Yeah, Um, I mean, that's interesting. I've been thinking about like, I was just thinking two days ago that I wanted to get Vice City for the original Xbox since that's what I've got laying around in the bedroom TV. Um, And then I saw this news and I'm like, well, that's awesome because I can play a maybe a better looking version of it. But wait a minute, I have to go buy like a backbone controller or something because I'm sure if there are on-screen controls for that, they're going to be awful. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how it works. Netflix has an app and it's just like called like Netflix controller. And it is just button like screen controls on your like phone screen. And then however, like I don't know if you you stream it to your television or what but the i guess it's it's possible the the whole situation so yeah um yeah are you a netflix subscriber yeah okay yeah try it out what do you got to lose you know see what yeah, it's like well. yeah i i'm interested now you know we've we should talk to the the trilogy before when it when it first came out and after reading up on it a little bit i guess they've they've done a lot to make it a little bit better it's not as big of a joke as it was when they first announced the like the remaster or whatever they called it. But um, yeah, this package comes with uh, GTA 3, the Definitive Edition, Grand Theft Auto Vice City, Definitive Edition, and Grand Theft Auto San Andreas Definitive Edition. So uh, three fantastic games available if you are a Netflix subscriber. Um, and they're ad-free, you know, no pop-ups or anything like that. So this is your homework dude but so after december 14th between then and the new year i'm writing it down so i don't forget full clip will play netflix games um yeah. i mean theoretically I, my phone should have bluetooth and between the xbox controller or the playstation 4 controller i think one of those runs on bluetooth and maybe i can just do that i don't know i'll try to figure yeah. it out yeah do all of it and let us know. I want a, uh, I want a very comprehensive uh, review done, uh, three thousand words about um, Grand Theft Auto 
definitive edition on Netflix. Because um, they did so previously, uh, this is maybe a couple weeks back, Netflix also announced they were bringing a bunch of fantastic games to the the service as well. Like Hades is coming uh, sometime soon. And then Braid and uh, what was it? Death Door and Katana Zero. Uh, and then like a bunch of other like themed Netflix games, Shadow and Bone and something else i don't know squid game i don't i don't know do you see the squid game uh the reality show i saw a headline about it yeah but i haven't I, watched I didn't see the show itself no me neither it looks uh terrible but i do keep seeing things like pop up like how awful the people were treated i was like see yeah. it's just like the show except they weren't <laughs> murdered also did you see um this bioshock movie that netflix is making like, uh, that should be uh, fun. I, like, I couldn't find a trailer or anything for it. Is this just, no. like, the announcement? There's nothing out. They just announced uh, that they're making a Bioshock movie. So mm-hmm. that will be uh, it'll be cool. It's from um, the, the guy that did, um, like, the Hunger Games movies. And, yeah, Francis um, Lawrence. Francis Lawrence, yes. He's directing it. And then the guy that did, like, Logan and the new Blade Runner he yeah. wrote it. I don't remember either of those names, but yeah, dude, Bioshock. It's gonna be if they do it right, it's gonna be awesome. Um, and then speaking yeah. of doing it right, did you see the pictures for the the Prime Video Fallout uh, yes. show, dude? Yeah, this I'm looks a little like more excited right. for that one. Yeah, yeah, they're like they nailed it. The picture of the the giant uh, dude, and then like the I don't, I've never played much Fallout, so I don't know the names of them. What is the guys with the no with the no nose? Uh, I think ghouls. Ghouls, yeah, they look good, man. I'm excited to see what this yeah. is all about. So yeah, some good stuff uh, based on video games coming uh, in the hopeful, not too distant future. Yeah, and hopefully it's not like a repeat of Halo or anything. And uh, it's uh, I know a, a good go this time. I never finished Halo. I thought like I saw that it the other day, and I was like. Cause it's on, it's somewhere else now too. Like it's not just on Paramount or whatever. It might be on Netflix or something now. And I was like, Oh yeah, this show. And that was it. I was like, <laughs> I moved on. All right. Next up absurd ventures. This is the new studio formed by rockstar games. Co-founder Dan Hauser. Uh, they just announced their first two uh, original storytelling universes. Uh, called American Caper and A Better Paradise. So now this doesn't mean new video games per se. What they're doing over here, their big plan is to um, create IP and have you know any types of multimedia around them, including video games. But basically they said... Um, Games take a long time to produce and are very expensive. We mitigate that risk through smaller outputs on projects. So what they're they're planning on doing different things like TV series, scripted podcasts, graphic novels. And for these two IP, um, they're doing American Caper is going to be a graphic novel. And this is uh, centers on two normal, badly damaged American families in a world of corrupt businesses, inept politics, and bungling crime. And then A Better Paradise is going to be a 12-episode audio fiction series um, where it's a existential suspense thriller set in the near future. So what is what are, what are your thoughts on this? It sounds, I mean, interesting. I, I don't know that I'd really be into the graphic novel or the audio fiction series, but it's an interesting way that they can kind of gauge interest in these worlds they're building. And if people are interested, I mean, it's Dan Hauser, co-founder of Rockstar Games, and a bunch of veterans from Rockstar Games. It's probably going to become a video game down the line. Right. Yeah. Like they said, you know, it's going to, um, those take money. So, yeah, I could see them building, like, kind of the, the core design for one of these games. And then, yeah, using these things to gauge uh, how much interest there is. But I don't know how much interest you can gauge from something like a 12-part audio fiction series like what how big is the 
the you know the the core group of people that want a new 12 part audio fiction series versus yeah. someone who is looking forward to playing a you know a, a video game so it's interesting I, i'm i'm interested to see what their their plans are and what they come up with but this is not what i expected not at all what i expected even the yeah the ideas like the one where it's just two normal badly damaged american families in a world of corrupt business and net politics and bungling crime like it sounds i don't know it's not what i expected well, yeah i mean i think the hausers were really involved with the writing um up until red dead redemption 2 and if you play the single player campaign of that game you know that there's a lot of heart put into it mm. so, so i mean i could see i can see them going a different route over here yeah yeah so i mean all this stuff as you know it's a ways off these are just announced uh ideas that they have uh and what they're they're planning on working on so yeah we'll see what else comes out from uh absurd ventures and um yeah hopefully some cool cool shit speaking of cool shit you see this ea patent they're working on uh, a way to put us in the game like they always said it's in the game remember that yeah now they want us in the game so yeah, this um, is this is interesting they're working on it um so this was uh it's a patent which was spotted by very ali gaming and shared on social media social media by next gen player so they discovered this patent that was initially submitted back in 2020 and it was just discovered um because it was just made public recently but what it is is like they want to technically like so put your voice in the game so that you can voice make, like i guess yourself right if you're playing a game as a character and you hear your voice coming out now up until now that would require like tons of input dialogue in order to shape what your character is saying with your voice and i guess whatever this patent does is it lessens the amount of um input that we would have to put into into the game and, I, and we're seeing a lot of that now with like um ai you know how like you, you can make celebrities say anything with this yeah. with ai and it seems to be kind of similar to that so um yeah yeah i think it's i think it's exactly that i mean i yeah. don't know about the part that that sort of narrows down how much you have to give it but the technology seems the same this is something that um anybody can go and access pretty easy and i've messed with it a little myself to like replace uh, Ch Tyler Childers' voice, if you're familiar with him in the country music scene, with uh, SpongeBob's voice. I've mm -hmm. done that. I've done, or I did a cyberpunk rap a couple years ago for uh, Diesel's rap thing, and I just recently went back and swapped my voice for somebody else's voice, and the song sounded way cooler. Um, nice. But I've seen some, I've seen some criticism of this. The article was just like straight up titled. Um, EA wants to replace voice actors by using AI voices in the game or your voice with AI. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's entirely true because the way these models work as of right now, you still have to have a pre-recorded voice and then you take that AI model and you put it over top of it more or less. Um, it's, it's mimicking all of its sounds and its direction and the actual acting behind it off of the pre-recorded voice. So I think right. a voice actor will still have to get in there, do the lines, then that will be you know, replaced by your voice. Sure. Cause I'm sure it would be an option too. Like I can't imagine them forcing you to like read a bunch of paragraphs before you play the game in order to like be, cause it's honestly like, it's not something that I really thought of. after like thinking about this, I'm like, do I want to hear my own voice in a game? I don't know if I do. Like I'm, I hear my own voice enough. Like I kind of want to, I play games to escape. I don't like, like, you know, I don't know. It would depend. It, it well, this would is really... what I was going to ask you about. Um, how often when you play a game, do you make a character that is, uh, pretty reminiscent of yourself? There are a bunch like with, um, like, like role playing games and stuff like that. Most of the time I will make like a version of myself. That's just like super strong and <laughs> yes. super handsome. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of us do that and it'd be cool to have your own voice instead of male voice one, male voice two. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. I think you're right. Sure. I, okay, you got me. I'm in. 
give me this okay. uh, give me this tech i want to i want to run with it um so yeah it'll be interesting to see if they able they're able to pull this off because um yeah oh. yeah one more thing about it that i was uh i was interested in reading um how this will probably be abused pretty quickly not in yeah. a bad way but like you know when people played fallout they wanted to make their hulk hogan character their nigel thornberry character uh, depending on how that voice model needs to be trained you could then go get tim curry's voice from mm-hmm. the wild thornberries and voice your nigel thornberry and it sounds like him and i think yeah. that would be pretty cool yeah now it's i yeah absolutely like I'm wondering if yeah you would have to read like specific prompts or whatever for them to to do that. But then yeah you could just use like some sort of AI thing to exactly put in the prompts and <laughs> then have it, the it first read. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little work around, but yeah, definitely be done. You know, have my my Taylor Swift uh, Baldur's <laughs> Gate three character actually mm. be voiced by Taylor Swift. Yeah. So yeah, this is uh. Some, some some stuff to think about here but you know that's uh who knows if it, this is just a patent that was put in there who yeah. knows if it'll ever turn into anything but it's fun to really think about. the part that sucks about it is that it is a patent that which means every other developer is going to have to pay ea a, a ton of money <laughs> sure. for it or yeah. we're just not going to see it in other games yep good point good point um i'm, su- I'm sure someone will like kind of create some sort of similar but different uh work around you know but because again i don't know how different this is from the stuff that we're seeing now you know with, yeah. with the ai stuff so very cool all right and then last up we got a new game announcement game called super normal now this thing looks anything but super normal um uh, it's this intense horror game reminiscent of pt in fact it's the they're t- they're calling it the spiritual successor to pt did you ever play pt no oh man so pt was um you know play are you familiar with the the idea of it i don't think so i've never oh, heard okay. of this before so it's a, into this. Yeah. it was a playstation thing so it was the um it was called the, the playable trailer is what pt stood for and it was basically the silent hill guillermo del toro silent hill but you don't know that it was just like this demo but it was this room and you walked around and it was terrifying it was like one of the oh. scariest games i ever played i've heard of this yes like norman people, reedus was in don't it don't they try to save it on their old console yes. and then never delete it so they'll always yes. have it yeah so that was like the, people were selling their like playstations with pt on it on ebay for like thousands of dollars or whatever great so anyways this is um the spiritual successor to that. Um, and the, this game called Allison road, which was technically like a spiritual successor to, to PT. So this guy, this single developer um, got the support from the original creator of Allison road, uh, Chris Kessler to create this game. And it's done in unreal engine five. So it has these super realistic um, environments and the trailer looks terrifying. So, um, you know, let me just read the thing. Uh, the developer describes it as a psychological horror game set in a seemingly ordinary apartment harboring dark secrets. Plays Detective Wyatt tasked with unraveling the unsettling disappearance of Masato Sakamoto's daughter. Search for clues and unravel the sinister truth. So, um, the trailer looks terrifying. It's got, like, this voice recognition you could talk and like the spirit like depending on what you say it'll respond to you and then um yeah these amazing photorealistic graphics of the environments and everything and then on top of that it's um randomized like all the effects in it the scary stuff are randomized so it's like everything's unpredictable it's only a two hour game from start to finish but like the playability is there because like it's like the scares are always different so Mm. um this one i was very excited when i when i saw when i heard of it when i watched the trailer i get even more excited but at the same time it looks so scary that i'm just like i don't know i don't know if i'll be able to do it (laughs) but yeah you're not a big scary game guy this haven't been historically but you know uh, I'll, i'll play it if it looks good yeah. Did you ever? What's the um? What was the one that everybody was playing? The co-op one. 
Phasmo Pandanonia. Oh, phantasmophobia. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, that one. <laughs> I didn't yeah. play that. No, no, no. I can see you with your like, with your, you know, playing that with like your wife, your Red Dead buddies, or whatever. Get in there. I, this is something I want to see. It's on my wish list. So full yeah. clip plays GTA on Netflix, and full clip plays Phantasmagoraphobia. This is on my wish list. This is my Christmas list, dude. From you. These are the gifts you're gonna get. All right. Me. Um. All right. That's it. That's all I got about Super Normal. That's all I got about everything. Anything you want to chat about? Well, I'm scared to death that this GTA big trailer is going to uh, hit between now and when this episode goes out. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Um, I don't know. If if it's coming by the... When are the Game Awards? A week from... So, as of this recording, a week from today, right? Yeah, um, I think so. Yeah. So uh, Maybe it'll be part of the Game Awards. Maybe we'll, we'll be right in there in the sweet it, spot. I hope so. Yeah. I'm thinking it's gonna be like why why release it anywhere else when you can? I'm sure Jeff Keeley's like he's like he's like I'll suck you, <laughs> you know. Let yeah. me show this at my awards show. Um, but yeah, and they said December, December, you know, starts tomorrow for for us. So yeah, we'll see. But um, yeah, it's gonna be lots of good stuff coming between. Uh, um, the next time that we'll have a show out. So I'm excited to talk about game awards on the, on our next show. And, uh, yeah. Um, what else? Nothing else. Nothing else. All right. Let's call it a night. Thank you so much for checking out this episode of gaming news weekly. You know, go check us out on fruit lab. You can find gaming news weekly there. You can find E rock the red there. You can find full clip there. We're all there earning cryptocurrency, for, you know, putting video game content up there, watching video game content. It's a great thing. And then uh, go check out our YouTubes. Uh, you can find this show, Pop Culture Playground, a bunch of other stuff that I do there. You can also find Full Clip on YouTube at GameFAX, G-A-M-E-F-A-X. And then uh, we're on socials, Instagram, TikTok. It's the big two. Um, Gaming News Weekly. Check us out there. And podcasts. Never forget the podcast. Podcast services everywhere. Type in GNW and you will get this show. You can listen to any of the 3,000 shows that we have put out. Oh, yeah. Good stuff. All right. That's all I got. Thank you so much. We will see you next week with more Gaming News Week.